Okay, another infective group, of course, would be the protozoa. And you'll see I devised this lecture to, in kind of three parts. I start off talking about the protozoal diseases that have uh, good evidence for use. Okay, either uh, it's an approved label indication or good supporting evidence. Then I have a section where we think it works, but the evidence is not uh, well established. And then I wind up with a few protozoal diseases which we have no treatment for. Okay, so let's start with the ones that we uh, have uh, pretty good faith that, that the medication is beneficial. So these are the diseases I'll talk about. Uh, coccidiosis is probably the major one from an economic standpoint. All of the species <coughs> have coccidia. Uh, huge problem, uh, again, in poultry, uh, feedlot cattle, but goats, sheep get it, um, just about any species. Dogs, cats get their own form. Luckily, it's fairly species specific so the, the dog is not going to give the cat coccidia or the goat is not going to give the dog coccidiosis. So uh, species specific. Mostly in young or immunosuppressed animals, primarily young, so you see it a lot in puppies and kittens and uh, yearlings, this sort of thing. Uh, signs are diarrhea, oftentimes with some blood in it. By that I don't mean bloody diarrhea like a parvovirus. I'm talking more about a feces that has some uh, blood clots in it, little flecks of blood uh, in the stool. Usually not gross melanoma or um, uh, severe bloody. There's a rare CNS form where it invades the brain and causes lingocephalitis. Never seen it, hope I never do, uh, but it has been reported in cattle. But mostly is um, gastroenteritis, diarrhea. This is just the, the life cycle. Uh, just to remind you, you have the infected oocyte here that's ingested the spor uh, uh, sporozoite, enters the enterocyte. This is a chazant where the organism is replicating, and then merozoites are released. This is mostly where the tissue damage is occurring. And then there's a final sexual phase where they make the new uh, oocytes. And it varies by uh, drug where these work, but uh, I don't ask that sort of detail. Uh, so we have coccidia sides and coccidia stats. Technically, there's a difference. Uh, as you'd expect, we, we say we prefer coccidia sides when there's active disease, but in coccidia stats to prevent it. In truth, they overlap a lot. So we tend to use them somewhat interchangeably. I have uh, devised the notes, though, along those lines. And I checked this morning and changed that number from what you had of 258. This morning I found 316 anti-coccidial drugs uh, on the FDA website. So it's a huge business. Now, this is not 316 unique compounds. This is often each company having their own version of the compound, uh, different uh, mixtures of anti-coccidial and ionophore and various other feed additives, but um, big business, anti-coccidials. So the coccidiocides, I mentioned in the sulfonamide section, especially uh, useful here, a lot of animals, cattle, uh, puppies and kittens, if they have coccidia, it will go on a sulfonamide, sulfadimethoxine, uh, which is albon, is probably most commonly used. Sulfoquinoxalin is an enteric only, relatively non absorbed um, sulfonamide that works. The potentiated sulfas also work, but we don't specifically use them for that. If you had some other reason that you needed a potentiated sulfa, then yes, it would also work on coccidia but usually we would use a straight, straight sulfa. They work on that chazant stage I uh, mentioned, and you've had sulfonamides. Just look back at your notes. Uh, furazolidone is a nitrofurane that is also effective. Uh, not as commonly used as the sulfas, but it is an option. Uh, and 
back in the 60s before we had onifores, this was a mainstay in feedlots, was to give the cattle uh, a nitrous uran. And since it was a carcinogen, it of course has been banned. Now, uh, a very common coccidia stat is amprolium. Trade name is Corid. It's actually a thiamine antagonist, and it turns out that uh, because of their high metabolic rate, coccidia have a high demand of thiamine. So you're blocking their thiamine uh, utilization and therefore affecting their metabolism. Um, <clears throat> it's given orally. Uh, typically as a liquid added to the water or a water-soluble powder added to the water. So it's primarily a uh, um, uh, water medication. You can drench the animal. Uh, there are directions for that where you can take the, uh, the concentrate and give it by stomach tube or uh, gavage. Uh, but primarily it's added to the water. A little bit of a problem in terms of acceptance that it's a little bit bitter. Uh, I had a, uh, a practitioner who taught me, uh, I respected what he, he said, he, he said he used to take jello and put it in the water trough uh, and he thought that helped with the taste of it. Uh, not enough to cause gelatin obviously, but uh, to flavor it. So I don't know if that's right or wrong, just a little anecdote. Uh, usually well tolerated, we'll use it in nearly all the species except the cat. Uh, the cat may be more prone to thiamine deficiency from amprolium. Uh, how solid that data is, we don't know. I've not seen any studies, but you will find it in the literature. Uh, <coughs> so um, we tend to avoid it in cats. Now, thiamine deficiency typically shows as CNS signs. Polioencephalomalacia in calves, uh, CNS signs in um, in cats as well. All right. So uh, cattle, poultry, extra label, and small ruminants and dogs. Um, this is the third time I've mentioned ionophores, uh, so I won't go into anything more than to say I'm just mentioning them here, but they are the main anticoccidial out there. So um, big, big things. Uh, decox, dequinate. Uh, disrupts electron transport in the coccidia. Uh, it, it is an effective anti-coccidial. I mention it here because I will be uh, discussing it as an add-in therapy for some other protozoal diseases. And the nice thing about decox is that it's extremely safe. I mean, huge, huge uh, doses have to be given before you get into a decox toxicity. So high therapeutic index approved for coccidia but used extra labelly for some other protozoal diseases I'll mention. Likewise, when we come to equine protozoal myelitis, EPM, I'll talk about Marquis, Panazaril. It happens to also be very effective against coccidia and because the tube, the product, is labeled for horses, uh, a tube goes a long way in treating a litter of puppies. Uh, especially in shelter scenarios where they've got a lot of animals exposed. Marquee is being used a lot extra labelly for that purpose. And that, like I said, there, there are just many, many more. Those are just the main ones uh, that you'll run into. All typically as medicated feed or uh, water additive. All right. Toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasma uh, gandhi. The cat is the definitive host where the life cycle occurs, but any species can get the tissue phase, okay. including the cat. It, it, it not only gets the enteric, it gets the tissue as well. And it is the tissue phase that causes us problems. And it can affect just about any organ you can imagine, and therefore the signs are uh, pretty varied. The ones where we uh, see toxo the most uh, it can cause um, uh, respiratory, a pneumonia, can invade the eye, can cause retinal injury. Uh, a big public health concern are birth defects <coughs> when the fetus is infected. Uh, a big issue is should pregnant women 
uh, have <coughs> cats in the house uh, and should they be tested for toxo? Uh, largely the answer is probably it's not a big risk as long as they either get someone else to take care of the litter or wear gloves. The uh, oocyte is not initially uh, infective. It takes about 24 hours or so for the oocyte to become infective. It could be 48, I can't remember. So uh, probably the risk is overrated, but that's a big thing uh, clients are going to ask you about is the risk if they're pregnant. Uh, but CNS is easily the thing we see the most here. Uh, so they, they can get a uh, meningoencephalitis myelitis, which can be fatal. Now, in human medicine, pyrimethamine sulfadiazine is the preferred drug. But as I mentioned uh, in the antibiotic section, clindamycin is probably what we use here the most. It's better tolerated, especially because we see this in cats. Clindamycin is much better tolerated than the pyrimethamine sulfur. So, uh, clindamycin for toxoplasmosis. Valentidia. Uh, not seen this because it's primarily a swine disease and again I don't do pigs. Uh, I did at one time reluctantly I would see a pig uh, but uh, luckily I don't anymore. Uh, but dogs, cats, and man can get it. These are zoonotics and dogs seems related to whipworm infections. Okay. Clinical signs, large bowel diarrhea, anorexia, dehydration, GI signs that you expect. Now metronidazole can work, but it's less consistent. Uh, mainly it's the tetracyclines here. So add uh, another special spectra to your list on tetracyclines. So Ballantidium coli, uh, the, uh, the tetracyclines are our drug of choice. 